been working on rhyme with your children, but for them to be able to hear or match or generate rhymes seems to be taking such a long time. Well, in this spooky special, I'm going to share with you some great ideas, some new books and some games that you can play at home or at school or in your nursery. For more than a decade, I've trained thousands of practitioners, teachers and parents in how to teach phonics and early reading spectacularly well. And on this channel, I'm sharing heaps of phonics games, reading activity ideas and top tips with you. So subscribe to my channel to add a bit of sparkling to your phonics and early reading teaching. And don't forget to click the bell to be notified for new videos every single Thursday. Learning to rhyme is so essential for children's pre-reading and pre-writing skills because it introduces them to the patterns of language. It helps them to make associations. So, for example, if children are good at being able to rhyme and they can already read or spell the words cat, hat and mat, to be able to read the word rat is going to be so much easier because there's a pattern there. They can hear the pattern, they can say the pattern and they can see the pattern in words. And the activities that we're going to do today are going to help children along that journey. So the first stage on a child's rhyming journey is to fill their heads full of rhyme using lots and lots of rhyming stories like this one. And what you need to be able to do and what they need to be able to do is hear rhyming stories, all kinds of different ones, over and over and over again so that they begin to tune in with the patterns and the rhymes in the books and slowly but surely what happens is the children start to join in with those rhymes and then you can start to leave out rhyming gaps and see if they can start to fill in the rhymes themselves and this is a really crucial part of their foundations of being able to learn to rhyme and they won't be able to think of their own rhymes or making up their own rhyming patterns unless this stage is really well embedded. So because we need children to be reading and rereading and rereading all kinds of rhyming stories. We need to get ourselves a really good collection of rhyming books and rhyming stories so that the children have lots and lots of practice in lots of different ways. And make sure the books that we're asking them to join in the rhymes with aren't too long, that they're just the right length for the age of the children. And I've got a couple of Halloween specials here that are linked into the description, but my very favorite is this one, what's in the witch's kitchen. This is really great because it's packed with humour. I've bought it for loads of children. They really, really enjoy it and it's really fun. So let's have a peek inside. So here's our book, What's in the Witch's Kitchen, our rhyming book. We're Changing Pictures. It's a great book by Nick Sharrett. It's um, a brilliant pop-up book and great as a present. Um, so I'll start by reading. We're not going to read it all because I don't want to spoil the ending for you. But let's have a look and see what's inside the story. What's in the fridge in the witch's kitchen? Open it left, open it right. Will you like what you see or will it give you a fright? Mmm, tasty cheese. Or, ugh, bats with fleas. What's in the bowl in the witch's kitchen? Open it left, open it right. Will you want to shout out yuck or will you cheer with delight? Mmm, toffee popcorn. Or, slimy frog spawn. As children get better at rhyming, we can then start to leave out the rhyming gaps in the story. So let's have a go with this page. What's brewing in the witch's kitchen? Open it left, open it right. It might not be dreadful, but then it just might. Oh, nasty goblins wee. Oh, or, mmm, nice strawberry tea. What's in the tin in the witch's kitchen? Open it up, open it down. Will you shudder with horror or grin like a clown? Mmm, biscuits and cakes. Or, <coughs> spiders and snakes. So you can see how we can join in with the rhyming gaps. And the story goes along this way until there's a surprise at the end of the book. 
but I'm not going to spoil the surprise for you now. So, hearing rhymes, joining in with rhymes and filling in the rhyming gaps in stories is a really crucial first step in the journey to being able to rhyme. But there's other things that children need to learn on their rhyming journey too. The next thing that they need to think about is being able to identify, hear and say rhyming pairs. So what do we mean by rhyming pairs? Well, all that means is really thinking about carefully the end of the words that we hear. So for example, we've got the word cat here, cat, and we've got a rat here, rat. And the end of both of those words sounds exactly the same. So there'd be a rhyming pair, cat, rat, cat, rat, cat, rat. But then if I introduce something like a pen, so I've got a pen and a rat, pen, rat. You can hear that they are different, so they wouldn't be a rhyming pair. Now, this sounds more complicated than it is. We don't necessarily have to know these by looking at the words and working out what the letters mean. We can do this with children before they even are introduced to letters. It's a really important listening and saying skill to be able to hear that rhyming pattern. But it takes lots and lots of practice. And so because it takes lots of practice, we need to adopt a games approach so that the children are doing it in lots of different ways, but having fun and engaging at the same time. So here's a version of rhyming pairs that I love to play following reading the Witch's Kitchen book. This is really cool because it involves real objects that you can find around the house, so you don't need to make anything. I've used a spooky theme because of the book, but you don't have to do that. You can just use everyday objects, two bags or two containers, two pillowcases with real objects inside. And the point is that the children are listening out to see if they can hear the matching pairs. And for the game, I've just got a selection of real objects. You could use pictures if you wanted to, but I think sometimes children really um, respond much better to the rhyming objects. So we've got um, a real clock and a sock and we've got a dog and a frog. We've got a rat and a cat. We've got a, a car and a star. And we've got a bell and a shell. So we're going to put all of, we've, I've sorted those out now uh, between the bags. So I've got all of one half of the rhyming pair, pair, like the dog in this bag and the frog in that bag, the rat in this bag and the cat in that bag. So I'm just going to quickly put these into the bags. So before you play this game with children, I'd suggest that you go through all the names of the objects to check that they know what the objects are and also talk about the rhymes with them. So talk about the dog and the frog and the cat and the rat and remind them that what makes those words rhyme is the end of those words. So rat, cat, d, og, f, og. So just to really hear those separate parts of the words before they even start to play the game. So how we play the game is very much is in a really similar played in a really similar way to if you play a game of pairs with cards. Um, only that we've got two bags. So bag number one then, child number one puts their hand in bag number one, pulls out something. Oh, it's a our car. Let's put the car down. Now uh, we're aiming for something from bag number two that rhymes with car. Let's have a feel. Hmm. Oh, cat. K R K at. K R K at. Now this is quite good because it doesn't rhyme, but they both begin with the sound, same sound. So K R and K at. So it's worth reminding the children that let's think about the end of the words because that's the bit that makes the rhyme. So rather than saying, oh, they sound the same, well, the beginnings do sound the same. It's the end that we focus on when we're trying to rhyme with children. So um, if we've got k at and k are at and are around to rhyme, they don't sound like they rhyme at all, do they? So they need to go back in the bags. Second child then, second turn. Child number two goes in the bag and pulls out a dog. 
there's the dog and then they put their hand in bag number two and they pull out ah a frog dog frog dog frog so that dog ends in og and frog ends in og so that is a pair snap so they can stay out so the game continues in this way until all of the objects are matched and this is a great game that you can teach the children to play in a little group and then leave out for the children to play on their own and be switching in the rhyming objects and the rhyming pairs so they've got different things to match all of the time. Comment below and let me know how you got on, I'd love to hear from you. And now here's something else you can try. So the next stage along the rhyming journey, once children are able to join in with rhyming stories, fill the gaps in rhyming stories and start to identify rhyming pairs of objects that are in front of them, is to start to be able to generate their own rhyming strings or lists of rhyming words. So if I showed the children rats, a rhyming string that they would be able to generate from themselves might be bat, cat, fat, lat, sat. So it could be real or it could be nonsense words. What we're looking for is that all of those words have the same ending, so they all have that rhyming element. And this takes lots and lots of practice, not least because children have to know a lot of words. They have to have a good vocabulary to be able to think of their own examples. So here's a game that you can play to help children on this next step of their rhyming journey. So we've got a r at, a b at, and a k at here. So you can hear that they all have the same ending. And this is just a simple memory game. Because children, to be able to generate or say their own rhyming strings, need to have practiced saying lists of words through games lots and lots and lots of times before they start to be able to make up their own. So this is a perfect game for that. So we've got a rat, a bat and a cat. And before I start the game, I'm going to, with the children, practice check that they know what the objects are and then say them all together. Rat, bat, cat. Rat, bat, cat. Rat, bat, cat. Rat, bat, cat. And then I'm going to do some magic. So I'm going to get out my witch's magic cloth and do some magic. I'm going to say abracadabra. And one of the objects is going to magically disappear. So here I've got a bat and a rat still, but there's something missing. Bat, bat, rat. Bat, rat. Bat rats, bat rats. The children have got to guess then what the missing object is. And once they've had a go, once they've had a bit of a think and they think it might be the cat, they can have a quick reveal. Da da! Were they right? Yes, they were. So our spell is rat, bat, cat, rat, bat, cat. So it's about helping the children to be able to hear that ending in those words and to be able to generate that rhyming list. You could, if the children are feeling confident, think about other words or other objects that we might add to this list to make it even more of a string. So we could think of, in this example, maybe a hat. So once children can join in with rhyming stories, fill in rhyming gaps in stories, match rhyming pairs and start to generate their own rhyming lists, it's start to, time to start to think about looking at actual words, being able to sound out or recognise the sounds to blend words and then to try and recognise from those words that we can actually read which ones of those follow a rhyming pattern. That sounds quite complicated, doesn't it? Here's a game that you can play at this stage and it's a great game to play with this book here. So as you can see in the title you've got words which children at the very early stages of their phonic development where they're learning letter sound correspondences for the first time it's really good because the names and some of the pages in the book are really easy words they're in bold print and there's a page in this book where Meg has some friends called Tess, Bess, Cress and Jess that's really good to link in with the game that we're going to play. Just take a look and you'll know what I mean. 
So here you can see what I'm doing is I've got together a witch's pot, a cauldron, some old bottle tops, a sharpie, some jelly and some boiling water. And as you can see what I'm doing is I'm writing with the sharpie on the bottle tops some rhyming pairs. So I'm thinking really carefully about the kinds of letters and sounds the children have already learnt and how I can write some matching pairs for those. So I've got words like leg and peg, man and pan, tin and bin and log and frog, those kinds of words. So I'm really thinking intentionally about that and the sharpie is great because it means that they'll stay nice and secure. Next thing I'm going to do is make the jelly. So I'm going to break up the jelly, uh, melt it in the, um, dissolve it in the boiling water and this is for the witch's slime, the rhyme slime. So this is going to be what adds an extra dimension to this game and makes it all Halloweeny and gooey. Now you can see that our jelly is almost there. I think it probably would be better if it was set a bit more. I think maybe I'll put too much water in it. But for the purposes of this slimy, rhyming game, it's perfect. So what the children are going to do is they're going to take it in turns to take out a word and read the word. And um, so I'll do that first. So pretend, let's pretend I'm the first one of the children. So I'm going to go in the slime, the jelly slime take out a word and I'm going to read it. D -o -g dog. Perfect. So that word's just going to stay out for a moment and then I'm going to put my other hand in the slime and find another word and see if it's a rhyming match. So d -o -g at hat dog at d -og. Is that a match? No, not at all. Now at this point because it's not a rhyme, we need to just draw the children's attention to the fact that remember when we're rhyming, it's the end of the word that sounds the same. So look at the end of hat, it's got an a and a t. Look at the end of dog, it's got an o and a g. So the word that rhymes with dog is going to end with og as well. And the word that rhymes with hat is going to end with a and a t. But for now, they're going to go back in the slime. And then it's the next child's turn, so they put their hand in, get out a word. Uh, what have we got here? K at cat. Then we've got to try and find the word that was cat, that rhymes with cat. Mm. K at cat d og dog. Cat dog, cat dog. Do they rhyme? No. And look again at the ends, the ends are different. So they go back in the slime pot and then we take out two again. So here we've got t, e, n, and ooh, m, e, n, ten men, ten men, t, n, m, n. Ah, they rhyme and look at the end. They both end in an e and an n. That means that they rhyme and they can come out and we can keep them out of the rhyming pot. And we're going to continue taking it in turns in the, in the Halloween slime rhyme until everybody's got a pair of rhyming words. So I really hope you and your children love reading those rhyming books and playing those rhyming games. If you look in the description below, you will find links to all of the books that I've used in this video so that you'll be able to get started straight away. To save you time, linked below are some lists of rhyming pairs and rhyming strings and rhyming groups so that you can get finding your everyday objects and get playing the game straight away. There are also linked some really good games that if your children are at the beginning of their rhyming journey, these games will really help them out. And also if you're brand new to teaching children at this early pre-reading and pre-writing phase, check out this video here. It gives lots of top tips for getting children ready for reading and writing with phonics when they start school. So if you like today's top tips and games be sure to give them a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified for more videos like this coming your way every single Thursday. Have fun playing your rhyming Halloween games!
Bye for now.